Welcome back to Dealing With It. This series will cover the first series for the Civilization 4 colonization mod, We the People, which I think is the absolute best mod for Civilization 4 colonization, which actually makes it better than the original colonization, in my opinion. And there's a whole bunch of colonies that we can play in the We the People mod. There's not just France, England, Spain, and the Dutch. There's also the Danish from Denmark. There are the Portuguese, there's the Swedes, and there's also the Russians. But today, we're going to start with the English because I've already played the French on the original colonization and I've played the Dutch on the remake, I believe. We'll go ahead and we'll talk about the We the People features as we play the game. But let's go ahead and discuss our strengths as the English. So we're going to go with George Washington of the English colonies. We have 20% more cross production in all settlements, 33% less crosses needed for immigration. Our workers that are unfree have a 20% greater chance to become free by hard work. Training colonists is also 20% cheaper, and our colonists have a 20% greater chance to learn specialization by hard work. So our unfree workers can become free faster. We get more people all the time faster, and crosses, by the way, aren't as devalued as in the original colonization. In this mod, they actually stay pretty consistently good throughout most of the game. They do lose some value as the early game progresses into the mid to late game, but that plateaus eventually as the number of crosses needed for immigrants is eventually capped. It doesn't grow forever. And our colonists can learn how to do a specialization faster just by doing a specialization, which is pretty damn good. Now that are, now these are the civilization traits for the English. George Washington specifically has experience general, so we need 10% less XP for unit promotions. We get 50% more great general emergence inside our borders. We produce more horses, more guns, and more gunpowder. Gunpowder is an additional resource needed for many different kinds of land military units. There's a bunch of extra goods and resources in the mod, which I think adds a lot of variety and interesting like strategies and tactics where you need to account for different things. George Washington also makes all of our land combat units 10% better, just naturally, and that's the end of that trait. Now he's also expansive. We have 50% great general emergence period, even outside our borders. Our settlers, and you do have to pay money or you have to use goods that you make to settle new cities and we the people are 25% cheaper in terms of equipment. So let's say that you needed 100 horses, you would only need 75 horses, but that's not the actual amount that you need. We'll be learning about how to settle new colonies very shortly. He also has 20% cheaper cost of recruiting units in Europe and our territory grows at a slightly higher speed that's about 33% faster, since you take into account the minus 25% discount. So we are a very expansive empire as the English with George Washington. We're all about going wide because our settlers are cheaper, we get more people period, and we have a naturally stronger land military. We'll be using the only map script that is in We the People, but this map script is absolutely amazing for generating a very, very interesting set of landforms. We're going to go with Revolutionary, the hardest difficulty, and we're going to go with the largest map size, which is Gigantic, which should hopefully not have any crashes, or at least very often any crashes, according to the developers. And we're going to go on Marathon Speed, which is three times faster, I mean not faster, but slower than normal speed. This is because the map size is absolutely enormous, and we need time to move around the map. Without being on Marathon Speed, if I played on Normal Speed, we'd only explore like a tiny proportion of the map. And I have a specific strategy that I like to use in the beginnings of these games with the large map sizes that helps me to keep up with the AI's massive amount of bonuses on Revolutionary. In We the People, you can have a colony size of one plot or two plot. One plot is the same as the original colonization, where you can only access the eight plots touching your colony. Two plots allows you to access the two plots radius from your colony. That includes diagonals. It's not just the fat cross like in original civilization, you do get the diagonals as well. We'll go with a typical four plot distance to Europe and then a typical 90 degree north and 90 degree south latitude for the climates. We'll go with a few isles, not a whole lot of islands. 
and then irregular, irregular land shapes, balanced or like large rivers. There are large rivers which are different from regular rivers. Large rivers are actually the good old water tiles, but functioning as a river instead. We shall be Dylan Washington. The quotes and the We the People are very, very interesting, by the way, especially the loading quotes. This one is just telling you how galleons work, though. Galleons in this mod, they can only carry treasure units and goods. They can't treasure, they can't carry other units. And they're actually letting you know that once you have enough treasures, the king may offer you a special price on a galleon to carry them, but he'll wait until you have enough gold on hand. The amount of gold necessary changes. On Marathon, it's 6,000. On normal speed, it should be 2,000 gold. But this is actually a pretty important event in the beginning of the game when you're doing exploration. Exploration is really, really powerful in this mod. It's going to get nerfed eventually when they put in a new movement system where every tile can cost actually negative movement to where like if you move a unit that has one movement into a tile that costs five movement the unit will have negative four movement points remaining and they'll have to regenerate those movement points over the next four movement turns and then they'll be able to move again after that so that'll actually be a big nerf to exploration which is kind of needed because i think that exploration in this mod is a little overpowered it's really really strong all right we're about to load in and here we go one of the things that We The People has is a lot of character and flair and like writing to it as well as pictures to help give you like a feeling of you're developing a colony over time and you're having different achievements. So this is the first piece of character that We The People has. It is the Royal Charter. It says, Kneel down and hear what we, God anointed majesty of the realm England, proclaim to you and to our court. You have come to us with a request. We graciously grant your request. Today, January 1492 AD, we allow you to sail west to the edge of the known world and beyond. We give you a ship, arms, tools, and some followers. If you discover foreign lands, raise there the banner of your homeland and claim as our own all the soil, its fruits, and the heathen children who reap them. You are charged with the pious duty of proclaiming the word of God there and increasing the welfare of your king. But we warn you, we have been told that a too free spirit dwells in your heart. Now, this is an ailment that afflicts every explorer. Cure it soon, or we will have you administered a medicine that will taste bad to you. If the devil drives you to act on your own and refuse to respect your king, we will send an expeditionary force after you to bring you back to your senses. You may rise, Dylan Washington. Your adventure can begin. This music, by the way, is the music from the original colonization. It's not the music in the mod. The music in the mod is really, really good, but I don't want to risk getting like copyright strikes on YouTube, so... I'd rather not do that. So there are two ways to actually win in the mod. You can actually do the independence or you can do a domination victory where you need at least 55% of the world population. Here we are in the water. Now we do start with as an English a caravel which is the most basic boat. It only has two cargo slots and five movement. We have a Dragoon free colonist so he is armed with guns, gunpowder, and horses. He's pretty good on like open terrain. He's not good against hills. We're not going to be making use of a Dragoon very long. We also get a Settler Firebrand Preacher. Remember, what I mentioned earlier is that settling colonies actually cost resources in this mod. We do have a Firebrand Preacher who's a lot better at generating crosses, and that's going to be a big part of our early game and really our entire game strategy as the English is cross production. But let me also mention that the colonies, they have unique units as well. So the English unique unit is the Evangelist, which is just a basic replacement for the missionary. There's other names elsewhere. It's not any worse or better than the missionary. It's just a different name. But they have the Colonial Distiller. So this is a replacement for the Master Distiller. He produces 180% of rum and I think fruit brandy is what these two are. Now that's a lot better than the Master Distiller, which is only plus 100% production. So as the English, we're going to be very incentivized to go around looking for sugar and fruit, if I remember correctly. Let's check the Distiller's House. And the Distiller's House can create rum from sugar or fruit brandy from fruits. Right now those two sell for what? Fruit brandy sells for nine and... 
we're almost souls for 11, so if we can find sugar, that'll be a lot better. The issue is finding sugar in my experience is kind of hard. Maybe I've just been spawning at the wrong latitudes though. Anyway, let's play the game. So we have our ship here, we need to search for a suitable colony founding location. In this mod, there are actually weather systems on the water. Below us, there is a favorable wind. This does not cost any more movement to move into. But if you end your turn here, you have a minus 15% defensive bonus to anybody that comes and attacks you. So they'll have a better shot at sinking you. And this is our second piece of flair. So we have a cute little picture here. And then we have a dream of fame and glory. Just a moment ago, you were sitting at your desk by candlelight, poring over old parchments that whisper of an unknown land on faraway shores. A vision appears. Sights and sounds of everyday life fade away. Night, black, darkness, and silence stun your senses. You see yourself on a coast far from home. You stand surrounded by your men. You hear your voice claiming this wilderness as your own. An ensign plants your flag in the soil of this new world, and a devout churchman thanks your creator for letting you discover it. You realize that this is the path predestined for you, the path that will write your name in the annals of history, so that for a thousand years and more, every child will see you as a symbol of daring and bravery. As your vision fades away, you understand what you must do in the morning. Well, seeing you as a hero may change, and it probably should, considering the things that I read in this mod and other locations about old Columbus. We found our first location. That might actually be suitable for sugar, actually. I think it's Savannah. So we have a new world. Another very nice little picture. Land ho comes the call from the crow's nest one morning, and your men rush on deck. On the horizon, you can make out a distant silhouette. At last, after long weeks at sea, you have reached a land where no devout Christian man has ever before set foot. A new world waits for you to subdue it. What wonders and what horrors await you? Let's see here. Oh yeah, holy crap. Maybe it's because we're the English, we must have like a start bias in terms of latitude for this area. So we found some savannah. We can grow horses, cows, coffee beans, and sugar here. And this is a deciduous savannah hill. So we can do lumber and furs as well as food from the hunting. Right here you might notice that this is an interesting looking coast. That's because this is a shallow coast. It's a lighter blue. Shallow coast is a type of coast that stops large ships from entering it. I think anything bigger than a merchantman cannot enter shallow coast, which means most of the military ships can't enter shallow coast. It's an interesting place to go to if you ever need to like hide. We want to get a certain founding father as soon as possible, so I'm going to actually check out this land right here and see if I want to set up. Now this might actually be an island, but I'm okay with that, especially because there's some pearls up here, which is absolutely wonderful. We definitely want to be making use of those pearls as soon as possible, but in order to make use of them, we'll have to either settle right next to them or expand our borders. And expanding our borders takes quite a while, especially on Marathon. But I do think this is going to be the best long-term spot for a colony because we can see that there's water up here and there's water down here. If I were to settle either one up or one south, I wouldn't actually be able to make use of this fish. Like if I were to settle here, I could access the pearl, but then I could only access the hill. And then in two plot colony sizes for we the people, you can't settle more than three tiles closer. Like you can't settle less than three tiles away from another colony. So if I settled up here at the top, we'd have one, two, three, this little possibly a peninsula right here would get covered by proximity and then I wouldn't be able to settle close enough to the fish unless I was able to get maybe like right just one south of that and that'd be a good question as to whether I would even want to settle there at all. So I think this location is a good location. We've also got horses here which is amazing. We are next to the Carib people. We'll meet them in a second but first we got to uh, say that we have arrive to temporarily stay and you know not stay forever to these people here let's see what they say you have come a long way traveler dirty clothes haggard faces and your breath smells like the sea pitch your tents be our guests regain your strength but never forget this ground on which you stand is not yours we are the children of this world and you are foreigners here so as strangers we give thanks for the hospitality shown to us now the crib are traitor raiders and coastal warriors take a look at their stats here in a second and okay we're actually on an island that's pretty interesting 
and this island we cannot settle any other colonies here and other colonies cannot settle here either because every single one of these plots is taken up within two spaces. That's actually pretty cool, I like that, because the English actually started off, if I remember right, well they did Roanoke? I think they started the Caribbean colonies before they started the North American colonies, but I'd have to double check that. Hmm, that was actually Jamestown for the permanent one, so I guess they started the Caribbean ones later on. Anyway, what shall we name this place? We've got pearls, we've got food, we've got plenty of nice beaches. This would be a great spot for tourism later on, but sadly, now is not the time. Our health should be pretty good, by the way. I do also need to talk about those two things. Oh, well, three things, actually. So colonies have health based on the train that they're on, as well as, like, having doctors slash medics inside the colony. You get health from being coastal, from being on a hill, from being on a river, or ac having access to fresh water, specifically and you lose health based on terrain by being built on unhealthy terrain such as marsh or wetland. We built on a savanna so that it was not unhealthy terrain. Anyway, what shall we name this thing? I think it's gotta be some kind of port. Actually, let's call these the Pearly Gates. That sounds good to me. I could have gone a Pearl Harbor or, or Port Pearl. I think we'll be good with the Pearly Gates. So the first thing that we're gonna build is actually going to be a chapel here. And being on an island for our first settle is not a bad thing, but it does mean that in order to send out my scouts to explore, I'm going to have to send them on a ship first to get anywhere at all, which is going to slow us down a little bit economically. I'm going to convert this Dragoon into a Carpenter, and then I'm going to have this Firebrand Preacher do some hard labor and cut down some lumber. We need to build a chapel so we get the Firebrand Preacher doing his thing in the chapel. Actually, never mind. We need to do political points. That's right. Oh my goodness. So the first thing that we always do is go for the first exploration founding father. At least that's what I always do. It is Jacquez Marquette. He gives you one season scout and he gives you plus one movement for scout. So normally they have two movement. With him, they have three movement. And then you can get some promotions that give you more movement as well. As well as making the terrain easier to move through by lowering the cost to move through it and he doubles your chance of treasure from Ancient Ruins specifically. So he is absolutely wonderful to get. We want to rush him as fast as humanly possible. Let's also take a look at the Carib traits in the Colopedia. The mod's Colopedia is actually pretty good. It's not 100% perfect, but I'd say it's like somewhere between 95 and 98% as good as it can be, or accurate at least. But I do envision that there are some improvements that could be made but the modders only have so much time, of course. Alright, so this is Joribo. He's a trader, so he has, well, we'll get 30% better prices from bargaining and trading posts, so we are incentivized to keep him alive. He has a free Chiki, which is an Indian storage site for their settlements, and he has 10% more storage capacity in all his settlements. So we might be able to get more goods from him for different uses. It's not very common that you can buy goods from the natives and sell to Europe, I don't think, but I should probably just look into it more often. He's also raiders, so his units need 30% less XP for promotions. They automatically get close combat 1, which is a plus 10% versus all these units. And he's a coastal warrior, so he has a doubled great general emergence inside his borders. He also gets swamp fox and keen swimmer. Swamp fox makes you good at fighting in jungle, marsh, wetland, stuff like that. And then Keen Swimmer makes it so that Amphibious stuff doesn't have a combat penalty. He also gets plus 25% more food in all settlements, so he should have more people on average because of his food income. So yeah, these guys are good in wetland, marsh, jungle, tropical grove, mangroves, swamp, and bog. Thankfully we only have... we have some tropical grove here and some jungle down here as well as a marsh. Does that get doubled? I think that does get doubled because it's both a jungle and a marsh. So down here, they would actually have plus 40% strength. But it looks like everything else is savanna or grassland as well as forest, and these guys aren't especially powerful in those locations. Up here we have some beans, which give food. So we have a crap ton of food sources. We've got the shellfish, we've got the regular fish down here, and we had the beans. 
Well, oh my goodness, there's melons here as well, so we can make some fruit. That's very cool. And that would give us plus one health to our settlement if somebody worked that tile. This is a fantastic little location here. Anyway, I've got 789 gold and I need more people to start doing things like exploration. So I'm going to immediately send the caravel back home, I think. Because let's think about that. We have the 150 horses needed for the scout that I want to run, which came from the Jagoon. And then we have enough muskets and gunpowder on hand to get a defender. And in the mod, if you go to a size of 5 or above, if you don't have a defender, the city can go into revolt and you'll lose out on its production for a couple turns because they're upset about not having a defender. And oh yeah, so we have health, we have happiness as well. So we have unhappiness versus happiness gives you your total happiness, your city happiness. You also have your law versus your crime. Crime goes up with population. It also goes up with a modifier based on how much you have in storage. So you don't want to keep a whole lot on hand unless you have enough law generated that it's not a big deal. Law comes from like uh, lawyers or judges specifically. It also comes from crosses and a couple other sources. There's also culture, which is different from Liberty Bells. Liberty Bells give you political points and revolutionary support. Culture is about growing your borders. So whenever you add somebody to the colony, you also need to think about health. Health is a modifier that is added to, well, multiplied by everything in your colony by uh, basically the percent. So if, if you have 10 health total, you have a 10% bonus to everything in the colony, including production of health, actually, which is kind of funny. And that's the maximum that you can get for positive health. Now, negative health, you can start going down really deep. I think you can get down to like easily maybe minus 25 or minus 50. I'm not sure if there's a cap or not. I think there is. And that is also a modifier. So you could basically like half the production of everything in your colony, including health. So it can really mess you up and it drifts over time. So right now we're producing two health based on our city location because we're coastal. We get plus two health. We're not generating health from any other resource. We don't have access to fresh water, so this wasn't the best place in terms of health. But over the next five turns, it, we, it will go up to 10 health, so we'll have a 10% modifier to everything. So yeah, whenever you add people to colonies, you gotta worry about health, happiness, law, and food, in case you can feed them or not. Let's go ahead and let's head back as is. I don't think we had anything else to sell. Yeah, we hadn't even generated anything. So all I need for the scout is I need provisions. I need 60 provisions. And provisions right now in Europe, they are being bought for 13 each. I don't think I have enough money actually. Well, 780. So I have just enough money to buy the provisions. I just need to get there. Well, shit. Probably just need to buy a person then. And then we'll produce something over time in the pearly gates. And we'll get enough money to buy the provisions after that because I can't hurry one of these dudes and buy the provisions at the same time. It might have been spider just to look around in the area for some shipwrecks, but it is what it is. So right now we're producing sugar in location. We could do coffee berries instead, but I definitely don't want to do that. I want to do sugar. Sugar is a big deal to England because of our special unique unit. So since we built our first colony, we get housewarming here. The carpenters put aside their hammers and you open the last barrel of brandy brought from the old country. Exhausted and satisfied, your people look at the first camp they have set up. It is not large, but it is a beginning. You now have your first settlement in the new world. The brush will be cleared, fertile land will be cultivated. You clear your throat and look around. Heads bow and you raise your voice in thanksgiving to the Lord who watches over you. We've also met our first natives. Cheerful children with brown, dirty faces. Young men with spears and bows, painted faces and a wary curiosity. Young women grind grain in clay jars while they glance furtively at you. Toothless old men hobble trustingly towards you. You suspected that this foreign land held wonders and dangers, but you would not have thought it possible that so many godless heathen children live here without knowledge of the mercy of Jesus. In the coming weeks you will tell them of the salvation that true Christian faith will give to their sin-laden souls, and perhaps you can indeed save them from avarice for the treasures they surely hide, the gold your men hope to get from this unknown world. Sure, friend, sure. So, my lord, your men stand before you. Deeply moved, they listen to your words. This is your nation's first colony in the new world, and your citizens thank you for giving them the chance to participate in this historical moment. Your men wish to take an oath to remind them of their virtues. Which oath will you have them swear? 
we could say this bee is shown to free the belt for Christian Sage to set a belt and get plus one cross production cross production on every single one of our central buildings, which would only be plus one period. It doesn't increase with the level. We could do liberty is what we teach. Good fortune is within our reach for plus one liberty belt production. Or even if our stomachs rumble, we, your men, will never grumble for plus two food production. I'd rather go with the Liberty Bell production to generate more political points to increase the chance that we actually get that first Founding Father. The AI on the very hardest difficulty setting in We the People is very good at getting Founding Fathers, and they're usually pretty damn good at playing the game in general just because of all their bonuses. Our caravel has arrived. Let's see, who do we want to rush? We don't need coal at the moment. You need coal for making guns. You make guns from tools and coal, if I remember right. But it might be iron ore, I can't remember which one. Powder makers make gunpowder from charcoal. We would need a charcoal burner. Wouldn't be able to keep up with this guy's production, not to mention the house to make gunpowder is expensive to build. A cabinet maker is not a big deal. Let's just go ahead and let's take the farmer, even if he's not going to actually do anything. And then we have enough gold that we can pick somebody else as well if we'd really like to do so. But I'm going to pop out, risk the king asking for money. He did not ask me for money. And take a look here and see what else I'd like to do. So I definitely needed that farmer to produce more food. I can't just buy an expert fisherman because I don't have the money. So that'll fix our food situation here so we can support more people. Now what would we like them to do? We could have them do ranching immediately actually. And that would start increasing the number of horses that we have and make future scouts cheaper as well. That's not a bad idea. Do have access to some exotic wood though, and exotic wood can be turned, I think, into cabinets by the cabinet maker. So let's just take a look at the master cabinet maker. He produces double, well, not cabinets, but furniture. He has double production of furniture and the special upgraded furniture. Furniture is made from exotic wood. We do have access to some exotic wood, but not a whole lot of it only three and we'd have to build his little furniture workshop as well by the way let's look at the colony again notice here that there's almost nothing present in the colony there's no blacksmith shop there's no weaver shop there's none of the basic buildings except for a base camp and the carpenter shop you must build everything else in your colonies you don't get to start with anything you don't even start for like a basic pier you have to build the pier i really really like like how much more involved we the people is and it requires really like thinking about things like what do i need now what do i need later how do i get that what are my next steps and there's a lot of strategy involved with i want to do a certain strategy which is like scouting and exploring oh my goodness i want to do a lot of strategy like scouting or exploring early on to get a whole bunch of money but i'm also dealing with what kind of immigrants am i getting because I use the English, I focus on crosses, but crosses only give you whatever you get. Whereas money, while it's more expensive, you can select what you want specifically. So money's flexible, but immigration gets you a lot of people, which is period. Anyway, great pricker is not a big deal. We might as well just go ahead and take the cabinet maker. He's the most likely to be somewhat useful. Although there's an indentured servant here, indentured servants do produce more lumber, but I can't hurry him because I'm out of money, so let's take what we got. Send the caravel on back to the pearly gates. By the way, there are animals in this mod. They have a strength of two. And if you were looking closely, that orca did indeed have a messed up animation. It was pretty funny. The modders sometimes, they like to add units in without animation, but almost all the units have animations of some form. They just add the animations later on because they'd rather have the gameplay value of the unit sooner. And there's only so many modders available. Plus different modders do different things. Some modders work on like... The, that unit is actually animated, it's just the movement's a little bit strange for the Orkin. Some modders work on like the code, some modders are like asset modders, some modders do animations, etc. Everybody's got different kinds of skills. Alright, our ship has arrived and we've got some other weather, weather systems to point out. The bluish weather system is unfavorable wind. It gives you a 50%, 15% defensive bonus, but moving through this costs two movement instead of one movement. Storms give you no defensive bonus and they damage you 25%. When you enter the storm, if you take the turn and you start your turn in a storm, you get damaged again. 
and they cost 4 movement, so you really don't want to move into storms if you can help it. When you're moving your ships around in with the people, I found that sometimes if you're moving long distances,